Why don't you talk to your one's best friend anymore? Feel she doesn't want to talk to me. What would happen if I stop initiating conversations? Many months later, haven't heard a single word from her. I did this to my circle of friends. As it turned out my friends weren't my friends at all but some of the people I didn't consider close were the ones who did reach out to make plans. So I ghosted my friends I've had my entire life and found a better circle. Happened to me after high school. Never heard from my friends again, save when one dropped by my house to charge her phone, but I ended up reconnecting with some people I knew in passing but hadn't hung out with much. Next thing I know I'm in a DND group and keep getting invited to movies by people that don't take I haven't got the money for an answer. Really makes you feel appreciated after years of only being friends with people because you're in the same general vicinity. I got really emotional about it in a supermarket and even my stoicest friend had a little I value our friendship moment, so that was nice. I deserve this one. I set a good girlfriend up with a close guy friend. Then he started cheating on her. He thought since I was his mate he could tell me, and I wouldn't tell her. Except, she was my friend too. I ended up basing my decision on a personal experience where an ex had cheated and everyone knew except me, how devastated and betrayed I had felt. So I told her the truth. She confronted him and his reply, crap. Don't listen to Miss Schick. She's just freaking jealous. Just play matchmaker to get closer to me. Etc. She believed him. So did my circle of friends on her side and his side. I never quite got over that. What a bish that dude must be. I wish you nothing but fortune. I wish you good fortune in the wars to come. Long story short. I love the guy. I wish we saw each other more often. But he's the flakiest, most unreliable person I know. He treats everyone like they are barely worth his time. Make plans with the guy and it's a coin toss, whether he'll even show up. I've known him for 10 years and it's only gotten worse, but I learned long ago that it's a waste of time to chase him. I had a friend like this too. Turns out, she was deeply depressed, and when she didn't show up, it was because she couldn't get out of bed. One of my biggest regrets was not noticing the signs. Lost her as a friend when she got better because I didn't reach out enough and I didn't blame her. This is me right now. I pretty much stopped hanging out with my group of lifelong friends because they rarely pick me up when I'm down. I still hung out with another friend regularly during that time because he always tries to help when I'm depressed. He can be an absolute peen in arguments, but at the end of the day, he tries. Which is honestly what I want out of my friends. We grew apart. I needed emotional support during a very tough time and she wasn't interested in helping, so I ended it. This happened to me when I was a senior in college. My best friend from high school fell off the face of the earth. When I needed her most, I had a precancerous tumor and had to have surgery. I was terrified and she wasn't there for me. It didn't make any sense. Almost a year after we stopped speaking, a mutual friend informed me that her father had just lost his battle to cancer. I had no idea he had it. She wasn't there for me because she had to be there for her father and I then understood that she probably couldn't emotionally handle both situations at the same time. It was then when I decided I would take her chance and attend the wake. I was so nervous when I got there because I hadn't seen her in over a year, but when I walked in and she saw me, she immediately burst into tears and gave me the biggest hug. To this day, that moment was one of the best I ever experienced. I got my friend back. A year and a half after that, I was the maid of honor at her wedding. I know not every situation turns out as well as mine. And I'm sure there are people who bail because they simply don't care, but in my case all it took was a bold effort by me, and it worked out in the end. I can only imagine the relief she must have had when she saw you and seen that you'd forgiven her. This story is amazing, and you sound like an incredibly understanding and loving person and friend. Colon close bracket. He cut me out of his life. He was my best friend for 15 plus years. We had grown a bit apart due to different lifestyle choices, but we always spoke at least once a week and found time to spend with each other. He was constantly talking about feeling stuck in our hometown and wanting to explore the world, but worried about paying for it. About two years ago I helped him get a job with my company, 
It was not a very exciting job, but it paid twice as much as he was making before, so I figured it would help him save up for traveling. About 6 months into the job, we were working together and got into an argument. We had fought a few times in our friendship and this did not seem any different than other times. I was over it by the time I went home. He missed the next 2, 3 days of work, then emailed our manager saying he quit. He removed me from all of his friends lists and will not respond to phone calls, text messages, or emails. I admit I'm not the easiest person to get along with at times, but after a 15 year relationship I would have liked to at least said a proper goodbye. It has been 18 months since he's talked to me. He was my guy and now most days I feel alone. Very similar thing happened to me. I feel you. It's really rough. My best friend ghosted on me. We met in third grade and were thick as thieves until I went to college. While I can recognize I wasn't the greatest friend always, it was 100% her choice to stop being my friend. I admit it still hurts nearly a decade later. I never got closure and I doubt I ever will. I'm not sure she has thought out why or would give me the honest truth if I asked. She should have been my maid of honor and it makes me really sad when I think of that. I try to remind myself that she caused drama for me, she was really passive aggressive and wouldn't talk to me when I did something to bother her. She also never opened up to me about anything bothering her in other aspects of her life. I don't need that back in my life. But I do miss the great times we had all the inside jokes, the way we knew what was on each other's minds we absolutely killed at the game taboo. And I have never gotten that close with anyone again. But I did read a really beautiful sentiment recently, which I will try to capture here. The people you have in your life grow and occupy space in the tapestry that makes up your life. When they are gone, it makes a hole where they used to be. The memories and love are still there and may always be there. So don't look at your tapestry as filled with holes look at it as your own unique lace pattern. The pattern isn't over, but it is constantly changing. The pain of loss doesn't ever really go away, but it does lessen over time. If you ever need to talk, send a PM. I had this happen to me, and I have no idea why. A great friendship of more than a decade just flat out evaporated with no warning. One day we were hanging out at a bar joking and enjoying our company as usual, and then a week later he began turning down every request to hang out slash go camping slash go fishing with a response that he was busy doing house repairs. That continued for months until all communication just kind of died. We used to talk deep things at the campfire, were always supporting each other through hard times. It really hurt that there was never reason or closure. He was in a new relationship, and so I gave him his space, but it's been more than 4 years now, and I'll always wonder what happened. Now and then, maybe once ever 6 months or so, he'll message me something brief, when he finds something. That reminds him of some funny joke we shared. It is the strangest thing. More than anything, I hope he is okay. I think he, you should try re-establishing your relationship. He sounds a bit like me, some of my closest friends I haven't spoken to in months. But I still want to hang with them. I was friends with my former best friend from childhood from age 11 through 40 for the sake of this post, I'll simply call her Mary. During our childhood, Mary knew members of my family very well, since we practically lived at each other's houses. We saw each other less frequently after high school, but we always stayed in touch, and in our mid-twenties were both back in our hometown for a couple of years, where we were able to spend more time together, before moving on again. Mary and I had again gone our separate ways, but around age 40, we reconnected on classmates.com, along with a bunch of our other friends from high school. This was a few years before Facebook. At that time, my brother was dying of cancer, and I told my high school inner circle who all knew him that things were looking fairly bad. Before I go any further about Mary, let me tell you about my brother. I say this not because he's been gone for 13 years and I miss him every day, but simply as a fact he was the nicest guy on the planet. He'd give you the shirt off his back without ever asking or expecting anything in return. When the cancer finally took him, his funeral was standing room only after the pews were filled. 
Anyway, two weeks before he died was when we got the bad news from the doctors that the chemo wasn't helping him anymore, and they suggested hospice care and pain management until the end, which is what we did. I emailed my circle of reconnected friends who knew him and told them the awful news. They were all supportive and wonderful except Mary. I should mention one more thing about Mary she used to be our resident hellraiser. Always in trouble. Always back and forth with different guys. Always getting grounded. But it seems during the years apart, Mary got religion, and she got religion in a big way. Not necessarily in a good way, but in a big way. So when I sent the email to my friends to tell them that my brother didn't have much longer, here was the reply I got back from Mary, has your brother been saved yet? There's still time for him to find Jesus before he dies. You know the phrase I saw read? That was exactly how I felt I could feel the blood boiling behind my eyes. If I could have reached in through the computer monitor and gotten her around her throat, I would have. The hypocrisy of it all is that out of all my friends who were on that email, she knew him best. She knew what an unbelievably kind person he was. She was there when he drove us back and forth to each other's houses, to the mall, to the amusement park, all without a complaint. She was there when, in addition to being an awesome big brother to me, he was also an awesome surrogate big brother to my friends. She saw all of it this bish knew him from the time she was 11 years old. And she sits there with her newfound religion and talks about how he needs to be saved and to find Jesus before he died. Frick her frick that hypocrite. The funner thing is, I can't say this about myself or about anyone else in my family, but if there was one guy who didn't need to be saved, it was him. If you do believe in God and heaven and all that stuff, and I'm pretty ambivalent about it myself, to be honest, then my brother was truly a guy who got an express pass up to the pearly gates. Instead of replying, I deleted her email and never spoke to her again. Over the years, she's made numerous attempts to reconnect with me. Email blocked. Fasa book blocked. Christmas cards. Torn up and thrown away. Sorry that this was so long, but since the question came up, I do have to admit that it felt good to type that out. Thank you for listening.